like a good breakup story here on Mad Money, not because I'm some sort of hopeless, jaded cynic who enjoys watching relationships fall apart, but because when big and overly complicated companies split themselves up, it often creates tremendous value for the shareholders. Earlier this week, we learned that Pentair, the big industrial, it's all about water quality, flow control, filtration, energy efficiency solutions, told us that it's breaking itself up into two separate companies, a water business and an electrical business. Pentair is going to keep all of its water quality and fluid handling assets while spinning off the electric biz, which will get the company's legacy enclosures, fastening, uh, fastening systems, and heat management technologies that help customers control their energy costs and protect them. Now, this separation is expected to happen sometime in the second quarter of 2018, and it turns out to be a fairly complicated company. Will there be, will be two smaller, laser-focused, market-leading pure plays that will be much easier for investors to get their heads around. And look, this is just the latest move in Pentair's transformation. Last summer, the company announced that it was selling its valves and controls division to Emerson Electric for $3.15 billion in a transaction that's closing. Plus, it's not like Pentair, as it's currently configured, is struggling. Near the end of April, the company reported a pretty strong top and bottom line beat. So what do we make of this breakup? Let's take a closer look with Randy Hogan. He's the chairman and CEO of Pentair, who will be stepping down once the spinoff takes place. Get a better sense of where this story is headed. Mr. Hogan, welcome to Mad Money. Hi, Jim. It's great to be here. Okay, so Randy, so uh, give me the background of this split up because these two companies, I think, will be much more interesting to Wall Street than Pentair was as one. So how did it come about? Well, you described it really well earlier. You know, we as Pentair have done a number of transformations and, and done a number of acquisitions and divestitures to continue to improve our our portfolio. Uh, you recall five years ago we merged with Tyco's flow control right. business and actually became, we're now a, a British company. And uh, we have an advantage structure. We had great positions and we're moving along, but we were complex. And when the oil and gas uh, problems happened, uh, the, the downturn in mm -hmm. the markets, uh, that really hit our valves and controls business hard. And we focused on restructuring that. And we looked at a number of things to improve the business and decided, you know what? that business would be in better hands with someone else and sold it to Emerson, as you described. Right. And as, as we went through that process, we realized um, that the complexity and the challenges of oil and gas really left our water business and our electrical business, which are really fine businesses, um, off the playing field in terms of capital allocation. Just the, that, was, that was the nature of, uh, of the impact of the oil and gas downturn. So after we announced the uh, sale of valves and controls, we took a look at, you know, what's our strategy going forward mm -hmm. and what do we do with these two businesses? And as you said, these are not troubled businesses. In fact, our water business is among the leaders and it is one of the most profitable businesses in water. And while uh, our electrical business isn't a large uh, business by competitive standards, it's certainly viable at the size it's at and it is the most profitable business. They both have prodigious cash flow. Well, well, and we let, said, these well, two businesses... I'm, I'm yeah, going to talk go ahead. about the water business because it's going to be fascinating to our viewers. Um, this is a company mm -hmm. that a lot of people are always looking for a company, sir, that reduces the use of water, that recovers water, that reuses right. water. And suddenly you're creating that exact company, right? Right. We, we, we've created it over the last, uh, last 20 years. In fact, you'll recall we were together in 2004 when I sold my power tools business and I doubled the size of our water business. All focused on that. Water quality and availability on the one hand and our other focus is on, on food and beverage industry because they water is the feedstock of food. So uh, our focus really is on uh, water quality and water sustainability so that we want to help people reduce their use of water, and the water they use, we want it to be the best quality possible. Now, I, uh, you know that we have been, we praise Tryon. They're an engaged investor, not an activist, but someone who sits down uh, and helps. Nelson Peltz likes to help. Were they uh, instrumental in some of these ideas to bring out value? Because I think it really is an excellent idea. Well, Tryon is one of our largest shareholders, and Ed Garten has been involved with our board for a couple of years now. And, um, and actually, they've been very constructive and participants uh, in all of the different options we looked at. Because this wasn't the only option we looked at. We looked at, uh, at all of the shareholder value creating options that also left our businesses to create a better, uh, a better future for our employees and really control their own destiny. So um, yeah, they've been a part of each one of these steps. And the whole board 
was unanimous that uh, this was the right thing to do and this is the right time to do it. Now, you did get a lot of money for Emerson. Uh, what, what will that, from Emerson, what will the optionality of that give you? Uh, because I think neither company actually needs the cash from what I can tell, but it's good to have. Well, they won't. We were actually pretty levered uh, mm -hmm. because of the, went, with the pressure on valves and controls, our leverage was high. We promised the agencies that we would uh, pay down our debt. We're in the process of doing that. We did a tender yesterday, started a tender to take our debt down. So we're going to be launching both of these companies with extraordinarily strong balance sheets and, and low leverage. And uh, there are quite a bit of bolt-on uh, acquisitions and maybe even larger ones over time so we can continue to build these businesses. And importantly, not only will have they be able to focus on the execution of their businesses individually, they will be able to deploy their own capital uh, and not be... Uh, playing second fiddle to one or the other. Well, I, I've got to tell you, I think this is, I was surprised the stock should have been up much more. I think some people realize it because it's been such a great performer. But I love both businesses, frankly. And both of them, I think, are winners. I want to thank Randy Hogan, Chairman and CEO of Pentair. Great to see you, sir. It's great, been, great to see you, Jen. It's been a winner. It will be more of a winner because people will want this water play. It is the ultimate in what the millennials will want as a stock. Man, money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.